How you doing, bud? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. All right, Kenya. Good to have you this morning. Uh, again, we should this should be pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, our first question is going to come from Alex Bozich. Kenya, I'm just curious, kind of with the the transfer portal, um, the the rise of I guess to that to, to prominence this spring. How do you think that changes recruiting? Um, on a year to year basis. And, and there's been, uh, I guess, some, some things written and talked about nationally about how it may change the recruitment of high school kids. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any insight on, on, uh, on that? Yeah, I think it's changed tremendously just because of the fact that each year, you know, there's a number of guys um, that are going to be in that portal. Like the number is over well over 2000 kids in the portal. Uh, you could literally build a team off of that. But I think the most important thing that's going to be evident as we move forward is the most important uh, people are the guys on your team, <laughs> the players on your team, and continue to recruit them uh, just as well as recruiting the underclass guys. But, uh, you know, I also think that, you know, uh, if you do your due diligence as far as your homework on some of the high school kids that are coming out, because they're going to be still high, uh, talented kids coming out of high school uh, and you build a relationship with them, I think you need to mix some of the young guys in with guys that are going to be in the transfer portal each year moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question, Caleb. Coach, um, being one of the coaches on the transition team uh, during the between Archie and uh, Coach Woodson, just mm -hmm. what, what was it like uh, keeping that with the uncertainty between coaches and helping guys as they try to figure out if they want to stay or transfer? Yeah, it, it was a difficult time. Obviously, it's the first time that it's happened to me where I was a part, part of the transition team, but I was happy to do it um, because – I know it's a difficult time for everyone, um, but um, I, I think the biggest thing is uh, what we've always done, be there and support the kids on their decision. And, you know, uh, when it took a little bit longer and guys started entering the transfer portal, all you can do is talk to them and their parents and support them. So uh, it was a difficult time, but also it was a time where I felt like, um, you know, uh, once they did hire um, you know, Coach Woodson, at, you know, we didn't know that at the time, but once that all happened, then we could figure out, and he's done a heck of a job of getting those guys, you know, back into the mix of being here at Indiana. Jim Coyle. Coach, you talked about the, the portal uh, and using that as a recruiting tool. How is that affecting, uh, as far as player development and the portal, how do you run that balance of developing your own players like you talked about and using the portal? Um, you know, coming in with a new staff, obviously coaches using uh, the skill, to, you know, skill instruction or our player development, uh, seeing what the guys are able to do. And so – Basically, by watching and working guys out and seeing some of their strengths and weaknesses, I think you also uh, see what your team needs as well. And um, uh, I think one of the biggest things we all know, uh, shooting is, is evident that we, we needed help in. So, you know, recruiting the next guy, you know, from the portal is going to be a premium on guys that can make shots. And uh, has done that. That's the biggest thing that, you know, going into this season that we really had to address. Next question, Tyler. Yeah, Coach, uh, just being at Indiana uh, last year, uh, being your first year here, what was uh, kind of the main factors in, in when you were offered uh, the position to stay again this year? What was kind of the, the main factors in deciding to stay? Well, first thing, you know, uh, I I've, was in constant communication with uh, Scott Dolson, the AD, uh, who wanted, you know, asked me to wait and, and see who he hires before making my decision. And so um, I was excited about that. Didn't know if it was going to work out, but, you know, excited that he wanted me to stay here. Uh, and so um, my decision, once I was able to meet with Coach Woodson, 
uh, for a couple of days and, and then him offered me the job, it was a no brainer. You know, I've uh, moved my family here in August. So uh, I really uh, wanted to stay. Uh, and after meeting Coach Woodson for the couple of days that I did, um, it was evident I like, this is a good guy and I would love to, you know, help him in his transition, you know, coming from the NBA. So, um, and we, he's put together a really good staff, I think, so. Dustin. Can you just to kind of keep playing off of that? I mean, what, what were the whole sort of mix of emotions like from the time that, um, you know, Archie gets fired? And I imagine at that point, you're wondering what is next for you. Um, I guess how soon in the process does Scott ask you to stand and tell you that you're going to have a chance to be a part of the next staff? Uh, how did you sort of approach that day to day? And again, just what was the, the whole range of emotion from throughout that entire period until Coach Wilson was hired? Yeah. Um, um... My biggest thing was to sit still and let things happen. I know it was a, a reason for me coming to Indiana um, in a short period of time, moving, you know, in August, coming in August. Um, that was a, a, a situation where normally a, a assistant coach doesn't move at that time. So I, I think everything happens for a reason. And, you know, um, I'm here, I feel like, for a reason. And I think, you know, the work that that I've done in the amount of time that I've been here. Um, I, I think uh, the relationships that I've built with our players um, and, and the staff people around, uh, I think that was one of the biggest things that, you know, uh, I felt like this is a, a great place. And, you know, by Scott wanting me to hang around until he hired someone, um, that, that gave me confidence as well. And, you know, did I have to, you know, day by day, try to make sure things didn't work out here, put myself in position to have other opportunities? Yes, I did that. But at the same time, I wanted to wait patiently and, and see what developed here. Jeff Rab Johns. Morning, coach. How are you? Good morning, Jeff. Yeah, I got I got two questions for you. Uh, first of all, uh, how would I, I watched some film, but I'd like your take. How would you describe Xavier Johnson's game? And what do you feel his impact could be at Indiana this coming season? Um, well, I, I feel like what he brings to the table is something that we we missed a little bit last year. And, um, you know, obviously the talent level as far as uh, he, he has a gift, especially in transition to create not only for himself, but for others. Uh, I think he's a guard, uh, first step wise that can get feet in the paint. Um, he's continuing to get better with his three point shot. There's still a lot of work to be done there. Um, but I, I think that, uh, he helps everyone around him, uh, be better to be quite honest. And I think he could. Uh, hopefully you can find easier baskets for some of our guys to put them in position to be successful. Uh, and then defensively, I think he, he's, uh, he can dominate the ball as far as guarding the ball. Uh, and I think that's how coach Woodson wants to play, you know, moving forward. So uh, I think, you know, as far as him and, and I think he also can have the leadership uh, factor as well. You know, some guys, what they play, you know, develops that leadership role, but him being an older guy, being a junior in college, going into his last year, it's like, you know, he has an opportunity to come in uh, through his work and his preparation, hopefully, you know, galvanize the team as far as the leadership. We need, we, I think we need that on this team, you know, to be quite honest. Um, and I, I think he can bring that to the table. And then uh, second question was, how's Parker Stewart looking? And obviously he's known for, for his shooting. Mm -hmm. Kind of what are you looking for him to, to develop and become uh, as we head toward November? I, I think one of those guys, especially how Coach Woodson wants to play in transition where, you know, he can run the floor hard and, you know, spot up for threes. But, uh, you know, it, the thing that excited me, I, I was uh, gone the last couple of days, but, uh, Coach Mata came up to me and he says, you got Parker, he had 20 for 21 uh, from three. And, you know, we celebrated that, you know. Uh, and so it, it's a situation where he's known for 
being a really good shooter. Um, I, I think, you know, now it's like, okay, you've done it in practice and hopefully, you know, that translates into games for us. Uh, but being a guy that, you know, uh, he's an older guy as well, which I like, um, but being a guy that can knock down shots and also on the defensive end, you know, guard one, two, and three positions. So um, we're excited about him. And, um, you know, from the spring so far, he's been able to do what we, we know we need, and that's knockdown shots. So, excited Perfect. about that. Thanks, man. Yep. Rick Bozich. Coach, you said you had a couple of days with Coach Woodson before you made your decision to stay. What What did you learn about him? How did you connect with him that uh, convinced you that, that you guys could work together and it would be a good partnership? Um, First off is just his presence. Uh, I, I think uh, when you talk to him, um, you're talking to some, someone who's real. And, and, and I, I think the knowledge that he has of the game and some of the things he wants to implement um, from the NBA style uh, to college uh, excites me. And I'm excited about that. Um, and, you know, him being an Indiana graduate, um, his blood, sweat, and tears were shed here. And I just think that he's going to put a lot of effort, time into making this a, a program that everyone can be excited about. And I would love, you know, I wanted to have the chance to be a part of that. So um, just from that conversation, I, I just felt excited about the opportunity that he was going to allow me uh, in, here. So, um, that was kind of our conversation and every day that, you know, I've been in the office and, you know, we've thrown ideas back and forth. Um, I, I just think, you know, the more, more we continue to learn each other, I think uh, this is going to be a, a heck of a situation. And now with implementing everyone, you know, our whole staff is pretty much here and set uh, every day. It's, it's like getting to know each other and it's, it's been exciting and fun. Mike Schumann. Yeah, hi, hi, Coach. How's it going? How you doing, Mike? Doing good. Hey, a recruiting question for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you were recruiting Xavier both before and after the coaching change, as well as a bunch of high school kids. Yeah. I'm curious what the reaction has been specifically from Xavier, since you can talk to him, talk about him and his reaction to Coach Woodson, and then in general terms with the high school kids, not naming names. Kind of what have you been hearing in, in terms of what they think about, you know, an NBA guy and Coach Woodson? Well, it, it was kind of Xavier's situation. You know, obviously I recruited him out of high school. Um, and I, when he went to, and when I left and went to UConn and he decided to go to, to Pittsburgh, you know, uh, one of the things I, I tell uh, parents and kids all the time is just like, my relationship that I build during the time that I'm recruiting you, I'm always going to follow you and support you. And he made a decision to go to Pittsburgh and, and was having an unbelievable career. But I've always uh, been a person that always stay in contact with certain people. And his dad and I hit it off from, from day one. So uh, it was one of those situations where I, I got to know the family really well. Uh, and when he decided to leave, um, you know, obviously I wanted to be one of those guys that could, you know, try to get him here to Indiana. So that, that initially started. And I think that's, you know, when you, uh, in the decision of making, well, making a decision to go to another school, I think the biggest thing, especially, uh, in what we are right now, you're not able to visit. Uh, I think the relationship part means a lot. And because I've had, you know, the previous relationship with his family, I think that, you know, helped us a lot to get the kid. And, and so um, that that's what happened with Xavier. And then, you know, just some of the guys that, you know, moving forward as far as the, in the 22 class uh, that we've been in contact with, you know, already, I think just getting Coach Woodson, you know, you know, up to speed of who the, who the guys are that we were recruiting in the 22 class and now, um, trying to build that relationship with him. Um, but we've made some good ground in a 22 class of building relationships with guys. And, you know, now it's time for Coach Woodson to do the same. So just getting them up to speed on some of the guys and, you know, 
the needs of our team as well. That could change. So some of the guys that we were recruiting early in that that 22 class, you know, he may feel like we need to have need a, a different need. So we, you know, as we move forward and, and continue to get to know our team uh, and what our needs are, we'll we'll adjust in that 22 class. And have you have you heard much from those guys in terms of what they think about you know Coach Woodson's resume being an NBA guy? Yeah, I think most of the guys that I've talked to are excited about it, um, but you know everyone's unsure of you know the style of play. How is he gonna you know acclimate? Be you know just get adjusted to the college game and style. And uh, I think you know sometimes it, it takes that one year for people to see uh, what the product is, and then you know, make the decisions from there. So uh, we got to try to, you know, bring that to the table with a lot of video with how he wants to play and the style that he wants to implement in here. Uh, and then once that happens, you know, hopefully because of the relationships we build with these kids, we're able to get some of our guys. Kevin. Yeah, coach, um, given your relationship with Parker and his family, I'm, I'm curious where he is emotionally right now also. And, I don't know how much that maybe played in a factor into him not playing this past semester or uh, just, just where, where his mindset do you think is? I, I think it's day by day, <laughs> to be quite honest. I think, he, you know, he's going to have his good days and bad days. I think the reason why he came here is that when he does have those bad days, that people are in his corner and support and understand, you know, his situation. And uh, I, I, I think that his adjustment, I know from talking to his mom, um, that, you know, she's very excited about him being here and how she feels like he's, you know, adjusted pretty well. So, um, you know, it's going to be a daily thing. I mean, um, anytime you lose a parent, that, that's, that's, I've had to go through it uh, this past season myself. So I understand it. You know, have your good days and bad days, but, you know, it's the people that are here with you, supporting you, uh, that means the most. And uh, that's what we've done. And you know, we've, all of us have been very supportive of them. Aiden. Yeah, hi coach. Uh, you know, it seemed like last year the, the offense was, was fairly set base, a lot of action trying to get guys going downhill. What can you tell us about what coach Woodson sees schematically for the offense, what, what we can expect to look different and, and just kind of what his vision is without it obviously being, without even him playing a game yet, obviously. Yeah, I think the vision of it is, you know, he wants to play more four out, one in, um, uh, and different guys bringing the ball up the floor as well. I mean, we want to play uh, fast early in transition, but obviously, um, you know, utilize guys in, to their strengths, you know, uh, with Trace, you know, moving them around a little bit more. Um, and then with different guys, you know, uh, the conditioning element, I know uh, he wants to be better. Uh, he wants to be uh, a team that on both ends of the floor uh, that we're, we're playing at a pace, you know, that people are excited about. Um, and defensively, that's where it's going to start, but also offensively playing at a pace where guys are moving and sharing the ball as well. It's not one of those things you just come up, come down and jack up the shot because you want to play faster. Uh, it's about taking advantage of, you know, driving opportunities, getting paint. But if it's two on you, spray the ball and, and get a good shot. So um, just an unselfish kind of style of play offensively, um, but also at a pace where, you know, uh, if you open, he wants you to feel free to shoot it when you're open. Last question, John Blau. I want to uh, follow up on Parker. Um, obviously, you have a pretty good relationship with him. So during the process with Coach Woodson, how much were you talking to him and, and trying to talk through kind of the decision or you give him space so you can kind of just get to know Coach Woodson, obviously, because he's a new person. And yeah. I mean, how happy were you when he inevitably decides to stay given everything he's been through the past. It, it was just so you guys know, it wasn't just Parker, man. It was everybody. I mean, all these guys, I mean, for, you know, coach has done an unbelievable job, um, you know, for, for Trace to come back and not even put his name uh, into the portal is a hell of a thing. That speaks volumes of Coach Woodson 
uh, and most of the guys that you know returned or raced, I would do, we were talking to them and their parents every single day, and that has to continue because um, you know they have to continue to get to know coach, but building that relationship and showing that you know that's what it's about. Um, and yeah, we lost a couple guys, but we feel like the majority of the guys that we got back, uh, we can continue to build a team that you know Indiana fans would be proud of. Coach, again, thank you for your time and uh, media folks. Uh, we will get with you maybe for something next week. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you, fellas. Thanks, coach.